hello everyone this is an interesting problem dear students i chose this problem because this problem involves few ideas which you may not be aware of or it may not be so obvious also so let me just go through this problem and i hope definitely it will solve your problems okay so the given problem is the total charge enclosed in an incremental volume of 2 into 10 power minus 9 meter cube located at the origin is dash nano coulomb if the electric flux density of its field is found as they have given a vector d it seems it is e power minus x sine y i cap minus e power minus x cos y j cap plus 2z k cap coulomb per meter square but first of all are we aware of this electric flux density vector suppose if you know this it's very good if we don't know this then it's fine we will try to relate that okay so first of all we are trying to observe a new vector idea which we usually recognize that one as displacement vector suppose if you are not aware of this it's completely okay so i want you to just relate this ideas first with gauss law okay so i hope gauss law you are familiar gauss law in electrostatics is given by we have closed surface integral of electric field dotted with area elemental area which is equal to charge enclosed by the gaussian surface by epsilon naught epsilon naught here okay so we are going to just anyhow epsilon naught is constant right i'm just transferring epsilon naught here and rearranging the terms we can write epsilon naught here just e dotted with the ds which in turn equal to q enclosed i'm just writing q we know that this is q enclosed let me write this as equation one so i'm using this epsilon naught e as a new vector which i'm naming it as d you might be thinking like how it is possible for quick relation okay so let me give you the si unit si unit units of electric field it is newton per coulomb and si unit of epsilon naught would be we i hope you remember like coulomb's law and the relation goes like this coulomb squared per newton per meter square right that is epsilon naught si units suppose if we multiply epsilon naught and e you can easily observe that it turns out to be coulomb per meter square right so you can easily check out this so just this is just to convince you like we are introducing a new vector called d which is just epsilon naught times of e okay now meaning what i'm going to write in place of epsilon naught e the new letter d here and ds the surface integral of this surface integral closed surface integral would be equal to q so this is our equation two and this idea is very very important once we know this some mathematical ideas here dear students there is an information in mathematics that whenever we have a vector let's say f is any vector which is having closed surface integral okay closed surface integral which can be written as the divergence of that particular vector and volume integral of that vector divergence of volume integral okay so where do we have this theorem and all it is recognized as gauss divergence theorem gauss divergence theorem this is something which you will learn in mathematics okay now if we use these ideas it becomes easy to solve this problem so first of all you should know what is this operator we say it is del operator okay so it is given by i times dou by dou x where dou by dou x is a partial derivative i hope you're all familiar with these ideas even if you don't know it's okay i will anyhow discuss here so j cap times dou by dou y and k cap times dou by dou z this is the operator now if we use our equation 2 here i have to write divergence let me write divergence just vector d first d dotted with ds closed surface integral equals q correct 
Dear students, here I'm going to write the charge Q as integration of rho is charge density times the small volume. See here, if we take rho as volume charge density, volume charge density, then if I take rho times dv is a small charge, right? Rho times dv is small charge. If I integrate this, I will get the total charge. Okay, so that's what we are writing here. Then using our rule, let me write our rule as equation number three. Using three, using three, we can write the LHS here as the surface integral, right? That is convert into volume integral. The reason for conversion is we can compare LHS with RHS. So here, this one is anyhow volume integral, right? We know this would be volume integral to get the charge. So let me use equation three here and convert this. It is divergence of vector D volume integration, integration of rho dV. So by comparison, we can say that divergence of vector D is equal to charge density, volume charge density. Okay, now all we need to do is take the divergence of vector d and we got the charge density. Okay, so if we know the charge density, we can directly substitute here in this integration to get the total charge, and that was our question. Okay, so let's try and simplify this. So, first of all, you know that divergence dotted with d, d vector is already given in the question. Divergence, I told it is i dou by dou x of uh, this is an operator plus j dou by dou y and k dou by dou z. I am writing it so that you'll have better idea. Divergence here e power minus x e power minus x sine y times i cap. Then we have minus e power minus x cos y j cap. And we have plus 2z k cap, right? I'm just writing everything what is given here, here. Minus e power minus x cos by j cap plus 2z k cap, correct? So this is e power minus x. Now once we have this, I hope you're all very much familiar with the dot product rules. So I'm just taking the components and simplifying using dot product rules. And we have dou by dou x of this quantity e power minus x sine y then minus of dou by dou y of e power minus x cos y, then plus dou by dou z of two times of z. Those who know what is this dou by dou z or dou by dou x and dou by dou y, it's good. So they are considered as partial derivatives. Whenever you are using partial derivatives, right? Say here we are der having derivative with respect to x, you treat every other variable as constant except x. So using that here, we have divergence of d turns out to be, see here, e power x variation, right? So sine y is treated constant because y is constant with respect to x, okay? So this kind of uh, recognizing y as constant, we name it as partial derivatives, okay? So I'm taking sine y outside, so e power minus x, Differentiation is e power minus x times minus one. Then we have minus as it is. Now we are di having differentiation with respect to y. So x should be constant. So I'll be taking e power minus x as it is. Differentiation of cos y is minus of sine y. Then plus here two as it is because it's anyhow constant. Differentiation of z with respect to z is one. So this is what we have. So then divergence of d turns out to be here it is uh, minus of e power minus x sine y and positive e power minus x sine y plus 2 okay so anyhow if we just look at these terms these are cancelling each other right so we can write divergence is 2 suppose if we recognize this one from equation uh, let's give some number for this this is equation four let's say using four this is rho using equation four we can recognize this one as rho so 
the since we are employing only SI units, we know that this will be like Coulomb per meter cube. This will be in Coulomb per meter cube. So then we have charge given as rho times of dv is integration of 2 times of dv, right? So 2 is anyhow constant. It is Coulomb per meter cube. So I'm going to take it outside. So integration of dv. So 2 as it is integration of dv is nothing but volume given. So given volume in this problem is 2 into 10 power minus 9. So it turns out to be 4 into 10 power minus 9 Coulomb. So in our question, we have to write the answer as 4 here in this space, correct? So I hope you understood this problem. If you have any doubts, please feel free to post that in the comment section. Thank you everyone.